Happy Thursday, it's Rich. So now we know why you want a podcast. And I'm not talking about what you want a podcast about, just why you want to do it, right? We'll talk about that other stuff later. So let's take it a little bit further and figure out what a podcast is. So last week, you wrote down, or recorded, the reason why you want to do a podcast. And the reason I suggested you write it down, or record it, if the latter, to get used to hearing your own voice, but in general, just to make this all a little bit more real to you. Again, you're not listening to this particular podcast because you want to do homework, But there will be some involved if you wish to be a podcaster with legs, like I said last week, right? So I began my show because I'm a voiceover actor. I I do some acting when I can, when my day job schedule allows. I've done some acting. I've done some voiceover work. My voiceover training began in 2016, but in reality... I have been training for years, right? My love for public speaking began back in high school, probably, if not earlier. So as a voiceover artist, contemplating ways to create my own content when there isn't other work to be done, I decided it was time to teach myself how to podcast. I had all the equipment, right? My voiceover training led me to the proper equipment. And I will share that information with you soon. But my partner on Thursday the 12th and I were going to see a concert, after which we wanted to document the experience. It seemed like as good a reason as any to finally sit down and try this thing, right? Now, at that time, my voiceover classes weren't covering podcasting. They do now, and very well. So, I did a little research online. I hooked up my my professional quality voiceover recording equipment with my laptop, For me, it's a MacBook because it has no fan, and uh, thus I won't have to worry about those kinds of noises. Of course, last week you heard fire horns and fire engines, and you might hear some of that now because where I'm recording, there is a firehouse right next door. But I left some of that stuff in on purpose. We're going to revisit it, so remember it. I was afraid to leave it. Right? Who wants to listen to a podcast about podcasting and hear a lot of background noise? I left it for a reason. In future episodes, we're going to go back and remove some of that stuff. I'm going to try to show you how to do it, and we'll compare samples. But in any event, I did some research online. I hooked up my equipment. My partner, Gaetano, there and I sat down, recorded for a couple of hours... I uh, used the software I learned to use for my voiceover auditions, did what I do, did what we do, and then figured out what to do with that audio. And as a result, 
you're listening to me now, two and a half years yesterday, two and a half years and one day after we began. You're listening to me now because of the research I did then. So I figured out how to podcast on my own. Of course, I needed instruction on how to use the equipment, which equipment to get, and all that good stuff we're going to cover. But I took it upon myself and found that experience very, very rewarding. I hope to give you tips that will also prove rewarding on your podcasting adventure. And by the way, I'm here to help. So don't forget to email or reach out on social media or contact me directly if you want to work together. But we did our thing, and approximately two weeks later, if that, we had our first episode live on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever you want to call it. So I, I've, often, I've often played with the idea of doing a program called Zero to iTunes in 2.0 weeks, because that was my experience. Now, in general... It takes time to get your content up on a platform like Apple Podcasts. And they are the big, the big boy. The, they are the granddaddy of podcasting. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I love Apple Podcasts. And, and they do disseminate or distribute your content to other platforms as well. But again, this is all information for down the road. One day, I punched my name into iTunes and nothing came up. Actually, that's not true. An audiobook came up because I've done a few of those. One day, I punched my name into iTunes and saw an audiobook. Two weeks later, I punched my name into iTunes. Did I get that timing backwards? Two weeks later, I punched my name into iTunes and voila, there was... my first episode. I was very excited. It's very rewarding, and I remain very excited. Now, we're having this particular conversation today because I want you to be aware that with all the fun comes some work, right? So, as a podcaster, you should be prepared not only to record audio and talk into a microphone or have other people talk into a microphone, you should also be prepared to plan out an episode. Plan out the format of the show in advance. Cover some preliminary or pre-production bases before ever recording word one. You should be prepared to edit and master and package your audio to encode it into a wave or more often mp3 file you should then be prepared to send that audio to a podcasting host such as apple podcasts once you send that content to them it's a waiting game but only sort of, because you probably want to promote the show. You probably want to begin preparing the next episode. Uh, You can record here and there whenever you want. By all means, just like you can have any number of reasons for wanting to do a podcast, you can also have your own schedule. You can record when you want to, how you want to, as often as you want to, and for as long or short a period of time as you want to. There are podcasts out there from people who record 5 or 10, 15 minutes at a time while driving in their car. There are others who do a weekly or daily show, 30 minutes or longer, with a lot of production value. So you want to have some of this stuff in mind. You're going to have to come up with a, a name for the show. Uh, And like I said, a format and some basic information, almost like a business plan. If you want to get that information down, again, on paper or in audio notes, um, the voice memo notes, to hold yourself accountable. 
to make it real, to make this more than just uh, me flapping my lips and, uh, you know, you dreaming about podcasting and never really taking it seriously. Again, if you only want to have fun, no problem. But if you're looking to grow the show and make more than a hobby out of this, or perhaps make some money, or perhaps use this as your calling card or put this on your resume, a little more work will be necessary. And by a little bit more, I probably mean a good deal more. Part of getting the word out that you have a show will be knowing how to handle social media, deciding how you want to market the show. Remember, we spoke just momentarily about your audience of one and about having a niche. So you're going to want to know who you want to reach and how to reach them. And there are, um, you know, obviously many social media options out there. We don't all like social media. We don't all want to do social media. We don't all know which platforms to use. But this is definitely a consideration you'll want to keep in mind. Uh, is a website necessary? Is a mailing list necessary? Are you going to launch the show and hope people find it? Or will you have a campaign in place to reach your target audience? Or to reach your friends and family first and then go from there? So this is all stuff you want to keep in mind because remember, as a podcaster, at least at first... You're going to be producing your own show. Remember, we talked about that. I can do that. I want to do, I know how to, I, I would do it this way and I can do better than so-and-so. You probably are going to produce your own show for quite some time. Once the show grows, you might later on consider bringing in other people you can pay or other people who don't mind volunteering their time to do some of these jobs for you. And that might be a good idea. Because a, a one-man show, at least as far as content goes, isn't necessarily a bad thing. But a one-man show wearing all the hats behind the scenes can run into some trouble. So you know why you want to do it. And now you know there's going to be some other work to do. And you might not want to. And you might not have to. You might be able to just download an app and upload snippets of audio whenever you want. You might be able to entertain some friends, entertain yourself, brag a little bit. But I'll tell you, my hopes for Thursday the 12th are eventually to evolve into a different kind of program than we're currently doing. As a voiceover artist, I wanted to have my own show and to create my own content. I... I do feel very confident about some of my public speaking and voiceover skills. Uh, this is why I get on stage and why I have the equipment and one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this stuff so much. I'm good at some of this stuff, okay? And I'm happy to say that. It's something I've always wanted to do. But the Thursday the 12th format currently reflects something less organized, less structured, and less serious than I eventually hope it will become. Of course, I can start other podcasts if I wish, or I can create a, a publication schedule a calendar that allows me to cover certain topics, let's say on certain weeks or certain days of the week, right? The sky is the limit. We'll talk about attracting and drawing and retaining an audience later, right? Uh, I could talk about Yankee baseball all the time. It doesn't necessarily mean Yankee fans are going to show up and tune in, though I probably would have a better shot at growing an audience than I do with the name Thursday the 12th, <laughs> right? Because even if you are a horror movie fan or a Friday the 13th fan, you're probably not going to Apple Podcasts and searching for Thursday the 12th to see what comes up. You're probably going 
and searching for Friday the 13th, in which case my show might not come up. So I'm, I'm covering a lot of different concepts here, but we're going to revisit them all. Just remember to keep in mind why you want to do it, and then we'll get to what you want to cover, what you want to offer, what you want to provide, what you think your topic or niche or target audience is. We'll get to all of that. But prepare yourself to do some work. Prepare an episode in advance. Prepare artwork for the show. Prepare to market the show before it actually hits podcast players. Record the audio, edit it, master it, and code it. Send it to Apple Podcasts. Promote the show before, during, and after publication. Grow an audience. Grow a social media presence. Explore other marketing avenues. Network with other people, right? Continue to make artwork. Maybe develop or design some audiograms, short audio video clips to promote the show, right? So now you're not just talking into a microphone. Now you're going somewhere else and editing together short video clips so that you can post your audio to social because they don't all allow straight up simple audio clips. They need a video attached so you can upload them. I don't know if I explained that properly, but we'll get back to it. So now you're recording your show, you're, rec- you're, you're editing audiograms, you're thinking about YouTube, and you're getting ready for the next show. And you're hoping your audience engages with you. You're hoping to see someone listen More importantly, subscribe, but you're hoping the audience engages with you so that you get a better sense and a bigger picture of whether or not what you're doing is working or what they want to hear or do they want to get involved, what's more or less interesting to them. So think about all these things and the next time we'll begin talking about what it is you want to do what it is you want your podcast to be about. Because now we know why. And now we know there's some work to do. Next, we'll talk about the what. I'm Rich Masati. One S, two T's. Reach me at Thursday the 12th podcast at gmail.com. That's Thursday, T-H-E, one, two, T-H, Thursday the 12th podcast at gmail.com. Questions, comments, goals. You can still send me your goals from last week's episode. Reach out to me. Let's talk. And we'll take next steps next time. We're all over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts and anywhere you do use social media, we'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, remember, if you can hear my voice right now, then you're listening to a podcast. And if you can hear my voice right now, it's because I taught myself how to do it. But more importantly, if you can hear my voice right now, then in some way, on some level, In addition to the fact that you and I both want to be podcasters, across these airwaves and radio waves and frequencies we can't see, you and I are connected. And we are one.